Now let's take another perspective in which the people who are preparing and the people who are helping prepare, they are involved. Okay. See, the cadre of officers is so very important for the country, for the armed forces, and for the career of the person who is applying himself or herself. But to help him prepare and orient properly, at least to the best of my knowledge, there is no official document available or that has been released from a formal source, like the service headquarters, Ministry of Defense, DIPR, or the selection boards. These are the you know biggest stakeholders, biggest participants in the part, you know selection process, or UPSC for that matter. They also conduct the ND and CDSC written exams. None of these organizations has released any official document. It is left to the perception and self-exploration of the candidates. So what happens? Since we require clarity, at least when we are going for the first time, then we look for the sources that can coach or guide you. And there you encounter multiple sources who provide multiple beliefs and then you find that there are multiple uh, you know stories of success and otherwise following the same set of beliefs so you find yourself at the crossroads right and this is where i say with great assertion great conviction that most of the candidates, they are unable to cross the bar, not because they lack, lack the talent or the merit. It is because they misrepresent their merit or the talent. They misrepresent their case, okay, by following the misconceptions and the popular beliefs. I hope up to this point you are with me. Okay. Yes, but the question is that who are these sources of misconception? <clears throat> so the first thing is that ex-assessors. And ex-assessors means those people who try to make their headway or you know, they, 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 they try to intrude in some other technique. Let's say if there's a GTO, and I know so many of them, I know quite a few of them rather personally. They are group, they were the group testing officers. I don't question their group testing ability, the ability to test the group. They have been wonderful assessors, but they try to give you some tips on the psych technique or the interview also, or the interviewing officer is giving you certain tips. Okay, the package that the XSSL provide, provides you, you know, many times it's added with the uncertain and for that matter, impurities. Okay. Service officers, every service officer has gone through the system and, you know, only after getting success, the person has become an officer. This is a fact. So what happens, many candidates approach any service officer. I myself have had approached other. I remember there was a friend of uh, my elder brother who was a service officer himself. And though I was a postgraduate in psychology, I wanted to know what happens over there. So my brother has taken him and then you know, he has given me some something. I don't remember right now. But this is a trend. There are so many, uh, you know, the successful candidates or experienced candidates, particularly around uh, Gurgaon and uh, those areas. Okay, these people they volunteer very enthusiastically to provide guidance to the 
newcomers in the system in the ecosystem of selection and training okay tra technology experts okay there are people who know how to present a particular thing on uh, social media okay they grab somebody they catch hold of somebody ki sir ek bhashan aap de dijiye okay and the more um, you know number of hits the person receives on the social media accordingly the person mints money but there is a great deal of those people who have never been a part of this selection training i mean they were nowhere closer to the armed forces yet yet in my own town lucknow here there are multiple things and only a few of them they have got association with service officers quite a few and most of them who claim to be number 1 or number 2 or number 3 for that matter they don't have any experience themselves of being anywhere closer to the okay the system of armed forces selection preparation let alone being the officer themselves right there's a fact unpleasant now what happens the moment you approach these people to uh, claim to be the mentors or you suppose that they are the mentors or they are qualified mentors these people they present a list of 15 qualities clubbed into four factor 1 factor 2 factor 3 and factor 4 and they have got beautiful names also factor 1 planning and organization factor 2 social adjustment and in that they you know they use Uh, things like uh, you know S O R, okay S O D, and you know these abbreviations, right? Then, in order to present yourself before the service selection board, you have to be having a positive mindset, positive approach, and positive stories and the positive sentences, right? these people they give you certain you know model answers model stories right if such a type of uh, situation comes you must write this type of a story okay now i have got a doubt on all these and let me make it very clear as far as the olqs are concerned so my first objection is on olq itself now let me give an example yeah there are 21 paramveer chakra holders param pvcs in our country some of them are alive some of them are posthumously they they have been awarded do a little bit of research try to reach the battle account what we call it as a citation means the commanding officer you know he writes certain thing about the deeds heroic deeds of that person in the battle field and with the recommendation he forwards it and so finally the honorable president of india accepts the recommendations and awards that person now if you just do a little bit of research you will find that there in their citation they admit they have shown almost every quality which is listed in the olqs courage confidence group minded cooperation sense of responsibility uh, determination hard work i mean to name a quality barring a few course so if multi, if majority of the quality which is there, there in the list of olqs why you call it as the olqs is it any exclusive to the cadre of officers yes an officer is also supposed to be having i am not saying but can it become the base of the selection methodology if it is not exclusive 
Think for yourself. Pay attention to this. Number two, the positive approach and the positive story. And the same aged old uh, kind of you know example, whether the glass is half empty or half filled. I have got my own take. I'm not saying that it is wrong totally. I'm only saying it is partial truth and it is irrelevant. Armed forces work in a team. Entire team has to have only one mindset. Like in a cricket match or cricket team, the captain who is revising his strategy on the ground and he charters mostly the strategies how to go about the game. There are other players. Do you think that the captain is supposed to be positive? Others have option to be positive or not to be positive. Or have you ever seen any, um, you know, advertisement for filling up the vacancies? Let us say uh, this particular organization needs uh, 40 computer operators. Negative attitude will be preferred. Here you are saying no, sir, but once the person presents these, at that time, people, they have the extra sense of thrill. Oh, my God, positive. Positivity is what? Positivity is your mental hygiene. It's all about it. It has got nothing to do with any, you know, cadre, any, any particular job. You may be in any profession, in any cadre, but if you are a successful person, you've got to be a positive person. If you are appreciated, if you are accepted in your colleague, among your colleagues, you've got to be positive. Then I've got a great objection about the model answers. Mind you, it is not something like a mathematics that has got a model answer. Let us say if, if your interviewing officer is asking you, he, uh, if I approach, if let us say one day I drop in at your place, I mean, he's just got, he, they, they talk, you know, they don't put a question by, it's not a question answer session. It's a conversation. So it puts you in different situations of life. He says, well, if, a, if somebody who is an honorable guest and who is a VIP kind of a thing, if he visits you, what type of breakfast you are going to serve? What is the best breakfast that you can think of? Can there be a standard answer for this? There are a lot many things which are according to your imagination, your thinking, your priorities, your resources. Anybody who is creating a story, let us say I am your uh, mentor here and you ask me, sir, just give me a model story. Because you would like to be benefited by the model of that story. But what happens? People, they copy the content itself and they reproduce it. R, R and R. Receive, retain and reproduce. So in the bargain, what happens? You lose your... This is a test of that person. It, is not, it, it, it doesn't become your test then. Okay. This is the conventional structure. Of the you know con structure of any conventional coaching. What is that? See, this is the mechanism of behavior. Behavior. You call it response. We call it this. We the psychologists call it as the S O R model. S means the stimulus. The stimulus means anything which you receive through your sense organs or sometimes through your you know physiology through your you know cognition. Internal or external, you may call it. So, if there is a stimulation received internally or externally, then this individual organism, we call it the organism, that processes. This stimulus 
is processed. It is connected with a lot of memories, learned content, and you conclude something about it and accordingly you decide to give a behavior. Now here, you will find in the conventional coaching, they teach you how to behave. They do not make any stress or lay any stress on how to process that stimulus. How to modify your perception. See, the moment you, be, you, you will take an example, Shodos, take an example. Suppose you are commanding your troops in a battlefield. You are seeing the enemy formation is there in front of you and enemy changes his formation in between. The tanks are retreating, let us say. Okay, or tanks are advancing. Let us say one move. Now, what is your conclusion about this move? How do you understand this move? Will decide how you will respond to it. So, in the battlefield, in the actual professional pursuit, you will be using this, isn't it? That's what I call it the pre-behavioral contents and operations. You remember what I have told earlier that the other people, they ask you to adopt according to the system and I say you have to transform according to the requirements of the system. This is the difference between the approach being followed at the commercial academies and what I am going to give you as a proof. I'll be laying stress over here. A picture is just not a picture, for example, in TAT. I will say categorize it whether it is stress inducing, whether it is stress free, or whether it is containing direct stress. You have seen all these terms in my book. Your response will depend on the nature of the stimulus rather than you just learn the response. Do not customize yourself with the responses. If at all you have to customize or customize, you have to do it here. <coughs>